Hello there, you're watching Dansky and this is the place to be to develop your creative skills. In this tutorial, we're going to learn how to create a grunge effect in Adobe Photoshop. So let's jump into it. This is the effect that we're going to be creating. You can do this with text and still keep it editable, logos, images, anything. And we're going to be using brushes. So this is super, super cool. You can see here, if I deconstruct this, we have a text layer with a mask over it with that grunge effect applied. And we also have a couple of layers worth of grunge for the background. So we'll leave that there, switch over to our new document. And this is 1920 by 1080 pixels. And we're going to start by adding some text. So we'll select the new layer icon from the bottom right corner, select the type tool and just left click anywhere on the artboard. And we'll be really creative and type grunge. And the font I'm using for this tutorial is called Axes. And we can go and set the size up here. So let's just press Command or Control A to select all of our text. And we'll type around about 240, I think. And position this centrally on the page. And I've also got the alignment set to central. So if I do decide to change this at a later date, it will still keep the text central on the canvas, even when I change it. So we've got our text there. It's editable. It's perfect. Fantastic. We'll switch that off for now. Now we're going to add the grunge effect. Now this is the super, super fun part. In fact, this is how I actually got into Photoshop largely was just kind of playing with all these different brushes. And while we're going to be using about seven or eight different brushes that are linked in the description for you to download, there are millions upon millions out there. The lovely people of the internet have graced us with billions upon trillions of different brushes. So I definitely encourage you to have a look, download them and just go crazy. Right. So we'll create a new layer and we'll double click on this layer and we'll call this grunge one. And we'll navigate over to the brush tool. Make sure you've got black selected. The shortcut to get your default colors back is D on the keyboard. And then you can click this little drop down at the top here and it will bring up the brushes panel and you can select one of Photoshop's default brushes. You can click the cog up here and you've got lots more brushes. So if I click on natural brushes, I can select OK and it will replace all of my brushes with the natural brushes or I can select Append and it will just add that to the brushes I've already got. So we can click on a spatter brush here and we can adjust the size using the slider. In fact, we can even adjust the brush itself and skew the shape of it or adjust the rotation by clicking on the triangle and dragging that round. So there's lots of awesome brushes there that we can play around with, but the the most fun, in my opinion, comes when we start installing custom brushes. So again, just click that drop down from the brush tool, go to the cog and go to load brushes. Now remember, first of all, download the zip folder linked in the description and then install the .abr file inside that. Or you don't have to install it, but just extract it from the zip folder. And then when you get this screen here, just navigate to it on your computer, wherever it is, and select it and click OK or open and you can see it adds these brushes along the bottom and it shows the size in pixels as well and these are incredibly creative because if I click one you can see it's absolutely massive and instantly a single click and you get a grunge effect and if I switch off the background you can see this effect this brush is on transparency as well so it's brilliant it doesn't have any white or anything as part of it so let's undo that last action you can undo that by going to edit and then undo or step backwards. Very handy shortcuts to learn, by the way. And if we press R on the keyboard, we can also rotate our canvas. Now we're not actually rotating the physical orientation of the canvas, we're just rotating it for our own view. So if I rotate this 90 degrees, like so, and then select the brush tool, I can now use this brush instead of going horizontally across the entire canvas I can now do this and just go one two three but what I'm going to do first is increase the size of this and we can use that do that using the slider here or we can use the left and right square brackets on our keyboard much much quicker so I'm just going to increase that one size by pressing that right square bracket just so it touches the edge of the canvas and I'm going to single left click and then I've got a grunge effect. Now we could do this, 
but because this brush has a hard edge, it's gonna look a bit rubbish. So what I'm going to do is use Grunge 1 and then press Command or Control J and duplicate this layer. And now we can drag this down, go to Edit, Free Transform, hold Shift and left click and rotate and blend these on top of each other. And next I'm going to hold shift and select both of these grunge layers and do the same again. That's command or control J to duplicate or you can just right click, select duplicate and click OK. So we've got lots of different grunge layers. We can still see a bit of a blend there but now I can select each one in turn and just grab that eraser tool, a nice soft feathered brush. One of Photoshop's default brushes is fine for this. And we're just going to zoom in and using the eraser tool, very subtly, just erase those lines. And make sure you've got the right layer selected. And because these grunge effects all overlap, we're just erasing those hard lines where they do actually overlap. Just moving them around there. And of course you can spend a lot longer on this and just make sure this is nice and polished, but this is quite a handy way to, if your brush isn't as big as you'd like it to be, you can actually use the same brush without it looking like you've repeated it down the page. So there we go. You can see a little bit of symmetry here and there, but if you, create more and more layers and then just go and grab like more brushes and just slap a few other brushes down there and maybe drop that opacity down when you start combining tons of different brushes you can create some really unique grunge effects so now we've got that we've got our grunge effect we can actually press R on the keyboard again and just click reset view remember this is just showing us how it could look so we can work with it portrait so this is the actual orientation and we have our grunge effect. We've got lots of layers here. So let's hold shift and select all of these and then go to layer and group. That's command or control G. And we'll just double click on this folder and call this grunge effects. And you can adjust the opacity of the folder and that will adjust the opacity of everything inside it. Or we can go inside and individually adjust select layers so some layers are more subtle and some stand out a little bit more than others and then we can lock that because we're happy with our grunge effect now and we can turn our grungy text back on so oh, not our grungy text our ungrungy text we'll turn our normal boring black text back on and now we can actually add a layer mask from the bottom of the layers panel to this text layer and with that layer mask added and black as a foreground color we can again select the brush tool and we can do exactly the same thing with these brushes now but we can apply that to the text so you can see I'm just using pieces of the brush I'm not just hovering it over and just left clicking and left clicking and it's always great to use different brushes as well. So you can see you can really start to get some quite creative effects using different pieces of the brush. Now, of course, because this is a mask, if we swap our black and white down here by pressing X on the keyboard, that has the opposite effect. So now I'm actually painting back into the mask. So this part of the process is very much a case of selecting lots of different brushes in turn and then painting a little bit in and a little bit out and just keep doing that over and over again. And because this is on a layer mask as well, you have that flexibility in that you can hold shift and left click on the mask and it will show you how the text looks. The text is all still editable. And of course, if you do want to delete the grunge effect, you can just drag that layer mask to the bin and it will remove it altogether. So you have a lot more flexibility. And there we go. That's how to create a grunge effect in Adobe Photoshop. As always, guys, please feel free to leave any questions or comments down below. Like this video if you enjoyed it. Take care and I'll see you next time.